All right, so hello everyone and welcome to the EduBots okay. webinar. Uh, this week we have uh, the pleasure to introduce uh, Marcus Schatten from uh, FOI. Uh, FOI, that's the Faculty of, of uh, Organization and in Informatics at the University of Zagreb. Hello Marcus, how are you today? Hi. I'm fine, thank you. How are you? <laughs> Great. Yeah, it's a lovely day here in Oslo. Uh, so uh, I'm really pleased to uh, have you here as a guest here. And uh, we do have, um, uh, you, you do have uh, a lot of experience in the area of, uh, of artificial intelligence and the use of chatbots and also the development of chatbots. Uh, yeah. So I think here today we will learn a little bit uh, more about the, the the project and the chatbot named uh, Baritza, right? Yeah, right. Yes. That's fantastic. Uh, so um, before we do that, I would love to um, uh, give uh, the guests an opportunity to get, get to know you a little bit. So um, would you mind uh, just uh, introduce yourself uh, shortly? Okay, thank you. Yes. Uh, okay, my name is, as you know, Markus Schatten. I'm the head of the Artificial Intelligence Laboratory at the Faculty of Organization Informatics and an associate professor. Uh, my fields of research include more or less uh, artificial intelligence uh, in computer games. Uh, I'm currently on my uh, uh, third project or fourth project uh, related to these two topics, so artificial intelligence and computer games. Um, the current uh, project, most important project by the Creation Science Foundation, which I have, is related to uh, hybrid artificial intelligence methods for computer games. So it's about um, uh, orchestration, uh, about microservices in the cloud for, for computer games, which are based on, on uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, one part of this is also uh, Baritza. Baritza is, uh, has been started before, but uh, is now a part of this project, we, we will try to uh, include Baritza into some uh, gamified uh, environments. And well, that's uh, hopeful and enough. If you have any <laughs> additional questions, I'd be, I'd be happy yeah, to. Yeah, uh, sure. Them. Yeah, I, uh, when I was Googling you, I found uh, that you've done a lot of research on um, on the multi multiplayer uh, mm, multiplayer yes. games and, uh, and how AI yeah. is used in that area. Uh, so I'm really curious to see if there's anything in the uh, higher education can uh, can learn uh, from the gaming in its industry in the use of uh, of artificial intelligence or the use of virtual agents. Uh, uh, do you have any thoughts on that? Yes, of course. Uh, so uh, the most interesting part from gaming to to higher education and education in general is gamification, the process of gamification. Uh, and we are using gamification on more or less all of my my courses, which I, which I hold. We have a, a we use a very very great system. It's, it's called Classcraft, uh, which is uh, an RPG like uh, system. It's, it's a learning system, but it's an RPG like system where you give quests to your students. You give them uh, points that can advance in their levels. They can learn uh, various. Uh, 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 spells and, and, and such things and if they can use those spells for example for real real life uh, uh, things like i don't know they can uh, eat in class or i don't know they can okay. uh, uh, they can okay. go five minutes before the end of the class home or or they can skip one question and, and something like for that those, for those without experience from gaming could you explain what the rpg is a uh, role playing game sorry role playing <laughs> games right role playing games yes there's a role playing games um, I don't know, uh, for example, uh, um, old style games like Final Fantasy, um, Zelda, or, or something like that. These are, these are uh, uh, role playing games. So you basically then, turn, turn the classroom and the virtual classroom into an arena for, yes. for role playing games. Yes, 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 more or less. Yes, more or less. Uh, it's, it's very. Uh, um, the, the system was actually developed for uh, um, uh, middle school students and uh, uh, at the time we had some research going on in, in middle schools to see how uh, students accept such a system and so on. 
And when I presented that uh, on our conference, the students asked me, when will we get that? We want that. And I thought, okay, they are too old. They are uh, students. They are uh, uh, 20 or something years old. They don't play such games. And then, uh, okay, okay, I tr tried it out and we had really, 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 really good results. So students are much more engaged. They uh, uh, solve weekly uh, tasks much, much more. We have a high rate of uh, uh, students that pass the exams. So mm -hmm. I think it's, it's a good thing. That's promising. Uh, yeah. the, and the name was Classcraft, was that right? Classcraft, the, yes, yes. And you uh, could use that uh, in any subject? Uh, yes, you, more or less. In any subject, uh, yes, you can use it in any subject. It is uh, not uh, um, connected to any type of teaching. Hmm. Um, it's uh, you can even uh, use uh, other activities that you have in your class and then turn in them into points or into uh, experience points okay. or something into yeah. the game. And uh, you have I don't know you have boss, boss battles for example, yeah. uh, where you uh, can put in, this is a test, usually you put in questions and they have to answer questions to, to uh, fight the boss. You have random events where, I don't know, everybody gets uh, the experience low for it uh, or they get a disease or I don't know, something like that. I think so I, need to, uh, I need to move to Varashtin and, uh, and attend your classes and sign up for, sign up for a bachelor program or something there again. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Yeah. That would be funny. Yeah. Um, so um, with that introduction, uh, I think uh, everyone is uh, curious to learn a bit more about the Baritza uh, cognitive agent. Uh, uh, so uh, I think I would like to give you uh, give you the floor and um, and uh, take it from there. And then uh, you you can decide yourself if you would uh, want questions along the way if, or if you prefer to have a q a in the end of the okay the end of the session here okay i'll just start start my uh, screen share okay okay so uh, i hope you see uh, my screen uh, so this is uh, this uh, pretty lady here on my on my slide is actually Baritza. Baritza uh, is uh, uh, an acronym for Beautiful Artificial Intelligence Cognitive Agent. But uh, we have uh, Baritza is actually, uh, this is more or less a joke. Baritza is uh, an actual name from Hrvatsko Zagorje, which is the part of Croatia where our faculty is located in. Uh, Baritza uh, is, uh, as said, a cognitive agent, so she has the possibility to talk to you in Croatian and uh, answer uh, questions uh, about our faculty, the Faculty of Organization Informatics. Uh, a little bit of history, how Beritza came to be. Uh, it was about two and a half years uh, ago. Um, uh, I had an invited lecture at a conference, uh, which was organized by a, um, a computer magazine from Croatia, uh, VD. Uh, it was, was a conference for IT specialists and so on. And this was uh, a situation where artificial intelligence uh, has become something very, very important. And everybody was talking uh, buzzwords like uh, chatbots and, uh, and uh, uh, deep fakes and so on. And it was uh, uh, the time that the the editor of, of the main editor of, of the magazine asked me, uh, can you do something great for this presentation, like uh, artificial intelligence, where you can uh, talk to, to, to it and uh, do some stuff or show something interesting? And I said, yeah, of course, um, I think it wouldn't be any problem. There are a lot of things done and I would just use something that, that I find on the internet. And then after searching a number of hours to find an interesting avatar uh, for a chatbot or, or something which you can talk to, uh, I realized that there were actually no good avatars at one thing. And the second thing that there is uh, almost no support for the creation language. And well, then one uh, weekend where I didn't sleep much, uh, Baritza was born. And uh, the initial idea of Baritza was actually to be uh, 
just a chatbot for a presentation where you can talk to her during the presentation where she can, for example, change the slides or, or say some part of the presentation and, and so on. Uh, later on, uh, what uh, happened was uh, that I showed Baritza then uh, to my students in the lab and uh, some professors and so on. And uh, everybody was uh, quite uh, uh, interested in her. Especially I had one, one very uh, talented and interested student, uh, Tiana Shockets, who uh, developed her further. And uh, I suggested to her we should try to make Baritza something for our students uh, at the faculty. And she, uh, she did that. She uh, created uh, the basic part of the system that is now installed at, at our faculty. Uh, where uh, Baritza is used for uh, students, where students can ask her questions about the faculty, about uh, uh, schedule, about um, uh, faculty members, office hours, uh, and so on. Uh, additionally to that, uh, Baritza was then encased into, a, I built a casing for her, and I will show later how, how this casing uh, was built. <laughs> so, uh, main features of Baritza, as I, as I already stated, uh, uh, she is able to talk, so she has uh, speech-to-text and text-to-speech uh, interfaces. Uh, you can also you can uh, speak in native Croatian uh, language, and she understands a number of phrases. Uh, she doesn't understand all you say, of course, but uh, a number of phrases which are tailored towards the objectives of, of, of the same of the system uh, these phrases are related to as I said to uh, faculty members to various uh, rooms in the, the buildings we have two buildings uh, at our faculty and are now building our third building so there are a lot of different rooms and different places and they're not numbered uh, very logically <laughs> so you have room number one I don't know in the second floor and uh, room number 10 and the uh, in the uh, uh, number nine in the basement and so on. So it's not, not easy, especially for uh, uh, new students uh, to understand where all the various uh, rooms are. And uh, also uh, Baritza has the possibility to talk in Croatian. So we have a number of uh, generated phrases, uh, which are uh, generated, you, firstly, we generated them using e-speak, but later with a, with a more uh, natural voice uh, that she can use to answer various various questions. Uh, she has a visual and audio interface, as I already said. So she, uh, the face you saw previously, is actually generated from a static 2D image uh, using a tool uh, called Crazy Talk. I, I will say some words about it later. Uh, okay. Um, a bit more about uh, the system, how, how she's uh, actually implemented. Uh, she consists more or less of two parts. One is a, a more or less backend part, so it's a cloud-based uh, part where uh, her uh, actual, uh, if I may say so, intelligence is stored. And uh, the front-end part, part where, uh, which is uh, the interface uh, to the user, in the back end, we have the possibility to connect various uh, uh, external services, various modules and knowledge bases to her so she can learn new things. <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, uh, which can be connected to a back end API application programming interface. Uh, there is a controller which uh, controls or which uh, 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 controls or uh, uh, manages the various modules that are used and also front-end API, which is uh, at the current moment uh, a simple simple uh, web socket uh, API where you can uh, talk to uh, the, the back-end and uh, get answers from various, various questions and so on. Uh, the front-end part is uh, a bit different. It's uh, uh, I will say later which technologies are used, but this is a, a more or less a web page. It's uh, uh, but with some additional additional uh, parts. Uh, the front end, uh, the user interface has a graphical part, uh, which is uh, this uh, video uh, of her of her 
uh, face uh, and uh, some phrases that are uh, that she's able to to say uh, and uh, the other part is uh, a presentation which is very similar to this one which you're uh, seeing at the current moment uh, where you can switch between slides uh, and and uh, so on uh, about uh, the the implementation uh, as I said, uh, Barita stands for Beautiful Artificial Intelligence Chat Agent. Uh, she is a beautiful lady, but uh, their, her implementation, uh, I would uh, uh, say it's an ugly hack. So <laughs> uh, it's more or less a number of technologies uh, uh, glued together with some duct tape. Uh, that, that's the implementation. <laughs> but <clears throat> it functions quite well, uh, actually, surprisingly. And uh, uh, the backend is implemented in Python uh, we, for the chatbot, for the actual chatbot implementation. We use the chatterbot module. A chatterbot is uh, a library which allows you to build uh, chat uh, uh, models uh, based on uh, regression models. Actually, you, you uh, train the model with various uh, types of uh, conversations. And uh, these conversations uh, can then be recognized and uh, well, you can either provide an answer or some command or something something similar. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yes? What's no, that? sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, and uh, we have used uh, a number of different models, uh, which we have uh, uh, organized in, in a way of, uh, uh, of a, a final state machine. Uh, each state of the fine state machine is is actually a model a chatbot model uh, a regression model uh, in which uh, the, the chatbot uh, always uh, recognizes just the context so the the, the fine state machine is, is uh, taking care of the context of the conversation so if you you first uh, first uh, to uh, start to talk to activate baritsa you need to say baritsa and uh, she, the uh, chatbot, the first model, just recognizes uh, Baritza and the various uh, uh, possibilities of saying the word Baritza, uh, and then uh, uh, changes the state of the state machine into, into an active state, where she listens to a number of various uh, possible questions or phrases. Uh, and depending on that, what, which uh, phrase she catches, then she uh, changes the state to another state, and so on. Mm -hmm. So uh, let me uh, let me shoot in a question here, or perhaps a clarification as well for some of yes. the participants. So, uh, yeah. so you're giving quite a detailed uh, technical uh, insights mm -hmm. here, um, and I th I think uh, perhaps it's valuable to just categorize this type of chatbot uh, mm -hmm. with more scripted chatbots. So your mm -hmm. uh, yes. your Baritza is basically a, a type of natural language. Uh, chatbot, right? That, uh, right. that users right. can can freely talk to, and then uh, what you're describing now is is how uh, how Baritza can recognize and understand what what the users are are saying and the intent of of what they are. Uh, right. saying. Yes, 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 yes. That is. So okay, I, I, I'm if I'm too technical, just just say it. I can skip this part about the implementation. No, that, that's all right. Um, that's all right. Okay. Perhaps okay. a little bit too technical, but uh, I'm sure it's valuable uh, to get some insights uh, on that as well. Okay, uh, just and then say a few more words. So uh, the backend is using a, a WebSocket server to talk to the front end, and the front end uh, is implemented more or less in JavaScript or jQuery for communication and also for uh, the part where she uh, changes or. Uh, reacts to to various uh, uh, phrases so she uh, when she has to answer something uh, we use a pre-recorded uh, video that was generated with this tool here this crazy talk tool mm. uh, it is, I, feel, I don't know if you have used it or not it's, it's a very nice nice uh, tool where you can use uh, static uh, 2d images put in the main points of the face, like, I don't know, the mouth, the nose, uh, the eyebrows, eyes, and so on. Mm -hmm. And it generates using various techniques. Uh, if you put some uh, uh, audio of a voice, 
uh, to it, it, it generates the movements of the face, of the mouth, uh, okay. eyes, and so on. And we have pre-recorded uh, various phrases that she can say mm. and it in a video. And this video is then uh, controlled by JavaScript, uh, depending on uh, what phrase she has to say in, in, in some moment. That was something I wanted to ask before when you showed mm -hmm. show the face of her. Uh, yeah. If um, yeah, how well uh, the the visual uh, interface are kind of um, how good the mimic are, and how how well the the mouth movements are to the phrases. Yeah, uh, the the, so. the phrases are surprisingly good. The uh, this uh, tool, the Crazy Talk, is is very very good at doing such things. Okay. Uh, you can see some minor uh, errors. For example, uh, okay, I don't have it now open. I can go back here for a second. Uh, here at uh, the head up, you see that the background is moving a bit. Here. Yeah. Yeah. That that that's for example a little bit of an error. But uh, usually, the, this was just a static uh, uh, picture. Mm. And you can see movement from the, the eyebrows, the eyes. There's an error by the eyes. You can see the double eyelid, the double uh, oh, yeah. uh, down eyelid. Uh, I, thought, of the I thought that was a makeup trick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can take it like that. But uh, it's, it's really surprisingly uh, natural looking. Mm. Okay, uh, where did I stop here? Okay, uh, and another thing that we use uh, to get the uh, speech to text part is Voice Notepad. It is a, a service, an external service. It has a very good support for the creation language. This is why we used it, but uh, it doesn't have an API, so an, an application programming interface. So we used uh, some kind of scripting to get the, the, the uh, actual text out of the the, the recognized speech. Okay. Uh, and another part that we use is uh, Python for the front end. Uh, this is why she is not usually on, on, the, on a web page, but uh, in, on a desktop environment uh, to control the uh, browser and to control the, uh, uh, the graphical user interface. Uh, she is able to provide various uh, uh, to um, provide uh, to change the the presentation mm -hmm. so for example go to another slide or uh, dynamically read into the schedule of a student or uh, show the web page of a professor and so on mm -hmm. so we use uh, pi out to gu guy for uh, graphical user interface uh, uh, automation and selenium for for uh, uh, browser automation mm -hmm. so uh, uh, what question yes. here uh, or i um, I can wait a little bit with that question. Uh, I, I saw your next slide, so I guess I'll okay. wait a little bit to, to that too. <laughs> okay, so this part is is is, is interesting. This is uh, the part where we uh, created uh, a casing, or or I created a casing for for Baritza. It was a more or less a do-it-yourself upcycle project uh, using. Uh, very old parts uh, for, from furniture or television and so on and we'll we show the a few a moment uh, something is not working yes this is how she looks uh, uh, this is the end, end uh, product uh, this is an old um, uh, makeup cabinet for 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 women it used, used to have a big big uh, uh, mirror in front of here this is a part of an old television set and this is a part this is a, an old uh, old telephone so how how did the did all this came to be so this is how, how it looked like before uh i removed this this mirror and changed the the position of of this uh to to uh parts of wood i don't know how you call those uh uh, it had some uh, broken parts, uh, some things were missing and so on. It has some marks on it and so on. I, I got it for from uh, something similar to Craigslist, but in, in creation for about 200 kuna, which is, I don't know if, how much is that, uh, 25 or something euros. Uh, then I, well, took it apart and uh, 
added some parts which were uh, missing and uh, glued them together. Then I uh, painted it with with a number of of uh, uh, the, uh, uh, coats coatings. Uh, this is an old television set which I more or less got for free. Someone uh, uh, just uh, threw it away on the street. I found it a few years ago, and it was quite a long time in my garage. And I thought it would be an interesting uh, uh, possibility to use it here for for the project of Baritza. Uh, so I had to disassemble it. This is <laughs> quite quite a Ooh, this this is uh, a very um, dangerous thing to do. Uh, there is uh, high voltage uh, in in such uh, uh, television CRT televisions, so you have to be very careful in, in removing this part of it. Uh, luckily, it was totally empty as as I, I removed it, so I didn't get a shock. Uh, uh, as I removed it, then I had to cut it. It was too too uh, uh, wide, so you you couldn't. Uh, it would take up too much space on on the on the cabinet. So I had to cut it, and then I also uh, colored. It looks, it looks like you are uh, you are sharing what your hobby is when you're not uh, working. Yeah, more or less. Intelligence. Yeah. I said I said before. Do you love before woodworking? Started, I said before we started, uh, my my uh, lab is about fun, not about work. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, it, it, uh, this was it's actually a hobby project. Uh, this was not funded by by anyone. Uh, it was in my free time when I when I created this, and uh, in the end, I donated uh, the the whole thing to to the faculty. So uh, it was uh, something I just wanted to do. It was was uh, for me a quite an interesting uh, project to do. Mm. Okay, then, okay, this is the part where, where then the television set is mounted. This is the, the other parts. That you so th this is a part uh, that I never seen in any blog articles on yes. how to build a chatbot. Yes. So, uh, yes. This is the first time I've seen okay, it. There's, there's always the first time for something. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, how it looked then. The, another part was the idea to use an old tele telephone to uh, uh, provide the microphone for the interface. The problem was uh, the usual microphones, uh, since the, the space of uh, where the barrett is, is, where the casing is to be placed, uh, is uh, loud and there are a lot of uh, people uh, talking and uh, there's a lot of noises. It's a noisy background. Uh, the idea was to use a telephone so you have a very uh, quality input of, of, of audio. And well, I took this also apart and uh, <laughs> well, painted it to be nice white because it was already discolored. And this is what paint looks like. Uh, the wires of usual. Uh, uh, headsets are so small and they have a very, very sm uh, uh, small coating on them, which you have to uh, burn with fire in order to, to get to the actual wire. Mm. And if you burn them, you usually burn the wires as well. So it was pretty hard to, to connect them in, in a certain way to, to the telephone set and, and so on. <laughs> This was a lot of pain to actually to, to, to build this part, but in the end it worked out, uh, and it was not so good quality as I hoped for. Uh, and what I did was then buy a different uh, wire and uh, create an actual. Uh, I to, uh, bought the jacks and the wire and then created a new one because the wire was just just not not good enough. But it worked at, at this point. So this is uh, the. A television set, a new television set. This is inserted, inserted into the uh, into the uh, casing of the old television. Uh, this television was sponsored by our faculty, as they heard that I'm doing this. What I'm doing, they 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 were very uh, uh, interested, and well, they bought then a new television set, which then I mounted into it with uh, screws and and uh, various. Uh, parts of wood because it was a bit smaller than the actual uh, old television set. 
And well, this is then how it looked like when the television was was inside. Uh, okay, uh, I just skipped one. This is uh, yes, this when when it was mounted on it. You can see there are uh, wires coming out because the computer, which is uh, used for for Baritza, is inside uh, the cabinet, uh, and then I had to create holes for the telephone. I wanted to mount it on. Uh, uh, on uh, uh, the 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 cabinet, so you uh, cannot move it away because you know students usually can do uh, bad things or it it can fall down or something can happen or an accident or something. So uh, I created uh, holes and then I put the wires through those holes to the computer, and this is how it looks when it, when it was uh, mounted. And this is how the computer is put inside. So it was also mounted that you cannot move it, so it can be transported and, and so on. Okay, and this is more or less the, the finished the finished thing. So this is how wow. right now. That's, a, that's an applause. <laughs> 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 that's quite an effort. Yeah, it, it was a lot of and, effort. Uh, it's uh, quite a lot of technical skills, it seems, to build a chatbot. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> not only this, this is more, more than a chatbot. Uh, this yeah. Is, uh, so this. Um, uh, there raises a, a couple of questions in my in my mind here, and that is, mm. well, you can go back to the the last slide. Yes. Uh, with the picture. No. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. That I have, was, it, uh, I have it. the picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I uh, it. Never mind. Just leave it there. So yeah, I think my question uh, is, um, what do you think? Um, like you spent uh, quite a lot of time on the on the physical attributes mm -hmm. of the chatbots, in both as providing uh, the, the the avatar uh, for the chatbot, but also the the body. <laughs> yeah, in the way it is the for, body, yes, for, for the avatar and and the combination of old style uh, technology with the inner workings of a mo modern technology. Yeah, that, that, that was the so, main point. So, uh, what's your, do you think, yeah, how, how um, okay. what, uh, what do you think about those aspects of, uh, of, uh, of a chatbot? Yeah, do you think that's now, uh, important uh, for, yeah. for students? Look, it, it was quite, that, that was, um, uh, the main point was uh, to do that because uh, our faculty is located in a uh, very, very old monastery. Okay. Uh, and the monastery, uh, uh, and we have, of course, we are an, an IT-related uh, uh, faculty. We have modern technologies and uh, uh, quite a number of, of computers and uh, other stuff. It, and this is, in a way, a metaphor for it. So you have an old casing, but a very modern technology inside it. Mm. So that, that, that was the idea of, of, of Barita. Yeah. And... Um... How would you say uh, students uh, reacted to this object being part of the <laughs> well, the uh, Some were interested, some were shy. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, students were trying it out. It worked sometimes not so good, sometimes very good. Uh, I, so I don't know why, but it depends on the uh, the voice. There is some some. Uh, for some people, it works perfectly. For some people, it doesn't work at all. <laughs> you, is that voice recognition? Or yeah, is that voice the voice of it's, it's uh, not up to that us. affect uh, the behavior of students? Uh, it's not up to us. It's uh, As I said, we're using an external service for, for voice recognition, for, for uh, speech to text. So it's not, not up to us. It's, uh, but it's partially uh, depending on, on this wire system. Uh, if the... Uh, uh, voice that comes in the digital uh, digital voice uh, that that gets recognized uh, if the quality of the the audio is good enough or not so that that is one part uh, but regarding reaction uh, 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 there Baritza became actually quite popular uh, the Croatian uh, national television was was there to to film her and a number of other outlets like uh, radio and uh, national newspapers. Uh, and uh, a lot of uh, hype was was, was uh, made about Baritza. For example, there was a popular uh, comedian from Baritin, uh, 
came to Baritza and made a sketch with it. And um, this was shared a lot on, on social media and, and so on. Yeah. He talks to her and, you know, of course, talks uh, talks <laughs> various stuff that doesn't make any sense to her. Yeah. And then he says in the end, no, she doesn't work at all. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> it was... uh, that's a fun, funny anecdote. Uh, yeah. So, um, uh, one question that came to mind earlier when you described kind of the technical aspects of building uh, the inner workings of uh, Baritza. Um, for some, it might come across as a project where you need a lot of technical skills uh, and there's a lot of uh, moving parts <laughs> to yes. something like this. Uh, so, uh, in t is there, did you, in the process of making Baritza there, did you have any any in, did you get any good insights or learnings uh, that you, you think might be useful for others that are um, considering uh, building something uh, similar? Uh, so, uh, you mean the, the software part or the hardware part? Yeah, the software part, I was thinking. The software part. Yeah, well, yes, there, uh, the, the the approach that we took is quite limited actually so we cannot uh, uh, in order to get a, a better chatbot that is able to understand uh, more different phrases uh, you you will have to take probably a different approach uh, our main approach that we took with this uh, uh, finite uh, state machine uh, is limited to uh, uh, the first how should I say the first state, the first state, the first uh, regression model, uh, where you have uh, a limited number of phrases that the regression model can uh, understand uh, and make a difference between various phrases. If you uh, put, uh, if you uh, uh, in a way enlarge this number, so if there are more and more different phrases, uh, the accuracy of of the model is uh, gets lower. Uh, so uh, the regression model is not a good uh, uh, place to start. Uh, we should, should probably use some other method for for uh, at least the initial phrase to to recognize uh, what is the intent of of uh, the speaker. Okay. That, that is one part that that uh, became quite obvious. Uh, not not especially in Baritza, but we had another chatbot in a different project. Where we used the same approach and the same uh, the thing happened, but because uh, we had a uh, gr much greater number of phrases, and the accuracy, the more phrases there were, the accuracy was lower and lower. Then we had to uh, use some workarounds to get uh, the, uh, an accuracy that was that was acceptable. Okay, so it's a challenge with in your in your experience here. Uh, there's a challenge with uh, the multi multi-purpose I'm sorry uh, telephone uh, can, can you please repeat the yeah. question uh, just trying to understand what, what you just mentioned here so in your experience there was a challenge to to keep a good accuracy up uh, yes. with a multi-purpose uh, chatbot yes when, right. when you yes. add more and more uh, yeah. phrases that uh, that the chatbot should understand Mm -hmm. They have a harder time understanding it, right? Compared right, to yeah. a single, single purpose chatbot. Yeah, a single purpose is, is is much simpler. So you have only a limited number of phrases that need to be recognized. Uh, but as soon as you start uh, do, I don't know, have hundreds of phrases, uh, the accuracy goes lower because there is intertwining between these phrases. They are similar in some regards, and there are possibilities mm -hmm. of. Uh, false false uh, positives where you get the, the uh, uh, wrong uh, wrong wrong recognition you, you the chatbot thinks it is one phrase but it is another and, and so on hmm. okay that, that was my question for for now okay Is so, there any uh, slides sir uh, there are only two more slides and, and I'm done then. So this is a bit, a bit uh, about future work. So uh, 
Uh, one thing that we'd like to do is better integration with uh, faculty services. Uh, recently, uh, our uh, IT department has created a, quite a, a good uh, API uh, for, for the various services we have at the faculty and we would like to build on this API and include it into Baritza. Uh, additional functionality, um, currently, as I said, it, she's limited on a number of, of phrases. We would like to enrich the possibilities, for example, with, with some, some other types of questions that can be asked, for example, about Baritza or about uh, the, the university and, and so on. Mm. Uh, there are uh, some efforts in other domains. Uh, I have one uh, 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 doctoral student who would like to use stuff that is done in Baritza in telemedicine. And we have another effort. Uh, currently, it's only, only a, a, a proposal for a project to use uh, something similar to Baritza and tourism. Okay. And uh, another thing that we, uh, we will do quite soon. We are, uh, as, as I already stated on this project by the Croatian Science Foundation uh, with orchestration, we are building a, a, a new uh, uh, it's, it's orchestration platform and uh, programming language for microservice orchestration. And if you'd like to migrate Baritza to this new uh, platform that we are building, it's called API or, or Awkward Penguin. But okay, that, that's another story. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Uh, here on the slide, you can see my email address in case you have later on any questions or some other ideas. Please do not uh, hesitate to contact me. Or if you have any questions right now, please, please let me know. Thank you very much, uh, Marcus. Um, that's fantastic. I'm really, <laughs> I'm really happy to uh, get to know you and uh, Baritza here today. Um, I'm also a bit curious about kind of, uh, yeah, getting more of your insights after uh, working in this area for such a long time. Uh, you you mentioned before everyone else joined here that um, that you started the AI lab already in 2013. Yes. Uh, um, uh, so um, I'm, I'm curious about uh, kind of your vision into the future here. Um, and if there's any, um, yeah, if I, if I can ask, for example, like what intrigues you the most, uh, about these type of, of chatbots, where do you see the potential for the future, especially in the domain of education? Uh, I, th uh, I think that there will be, uh, omnipresent more or less the, you, uh, this, uh, you know, you can already see that. So. You have, uh, I don't know, uh, 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 Alexa or, or, or similar uh, bots that, that you can, or Google Assistant and so on, where you can ask questions and get uh, uh, things done or, or you automate your home and so on. And uh, in education, uh, I think there are a number of things, especially uh, things that are more or less bureaucratic, so things that are uh, that can be repeated quite often where, where chatbots can can uh, be of interest but I'm not sure especially for for uh, higher education where we have uh, a very uh, moving target I don't know how to say that our uh, stuff that we teach is changing a lot especially in IT and every year uh, the the uh, our curriculum at least my subject is changing uh, quite a lot and I'm not sure that uh, chatbots will be able to replace the teacher, the one to lecture, the one who, who gives a lecture or, or uh, answers questions about the lecture, and especially uh, questions with, with insight about uh, special fields. So I'm skeptical about, about this part, but I think that there are a lot of uh, things that are repeatable, that are... Uh, uh, that can be uh, embedded into some knowledge base of a, of a chatbot, and that can be uh, of quite use in, in, in uh, uh, higher education. Mm. Thank you. Uh, so uh, let's open up here and see if there's any any questions from the participants here today. Um, can, can I? Yeah. yeah. Ask right. a question. Yeah. First of all, thank you very much, Marcus, for a really interesting uh, presentation and work, actually. 
I, I was thinking when, because you have the experience, what about if we use chatbots to uh, consolidate the learning? So actually uh, the lecturer would be enforcing or um, stating what um, the students are going to learn. So checking their understanding, uh, testing them, um, uh, the, the chatbot would be uh, suggesting more reading or uh, pointing them to uh, mm -hmm. ways of bridging the gaps in the learning somehow. Would that be possible? Uh, I believe it would, but hmm, partially, partially uh, it would be, be possible. We are actually doing something quite similar in, in our project now uh, with a professor from Florida. He has a, um, a gamification system for uh, uh, for uh, uh, literacy, I don't know how to, to uh, explain it better. It's for for uh, undergraduate uh, students, uh, no, undergraduate, uh, sorry, uh, middle school students and then the lower. Uh, to uh, it's a gamification system where they have. Uh, we are trying to develop chatbots uh, that are able to talk about a certain topic. So I don't know. A student gets. Uh, assigned to read a book or a novel or something like that. And uh, we are trying to implement chatbots that are able to uh, talk about this uh, uh, novel or, or anything that, that has to be read and to raise questions to, to foster communication between students uh, about the, the, the topic. So uh, I believe uh, this is partially possible, uh, but uh, uh, to, um, I don't know how to, to put it in the best way, judge, uh, to let the chatbot judge if a student knows or does not know some topic, is for me quite a hard problem to solve. I'm not sure. It, it seems to me it's quite hard. So how can you judge if a student understands uh, a topic or, or not? If they answer the questions, for instance, if they are asked uh, questions and they answer correctly, then this yeah. could be okay. could be a sign that um, okay. they have learned. Okay. Yeah. okay, you can answer questions, probably short questions, but what about uh, analyzing a problem or a, or a certain domain or a use case or something? The, uh, uh, it's not about knowledge, it's about understanding. Yeah. And applying it to yeah, yeah other applying. extending yes. it yeah. yeah 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 okay I agree yes uh, you can uh, ask questions like in in a test or something where you have uh, a certain short answers that can be understood by uh, by a chatbot or picked up by a chatbot but when you need uh, an elaborate answer where you have uh, I don't know five minutes of talking about the problem and and analyze it. I'm not sure that the chatbot is, is able, at the current state at least, is able to, to uh, manage such uh, such a, a, a body of, of, of text. Hmm. Yeah. I think we could Thank envision uh, not the, and the, and the chatbot doing all of it, but might be able to yeah. orchestrate peer evaluation or peer assessment. Okay, yes. Uh, and, uh, for the for that human uh, human touch uh, to what you're describing, Nora, uh, yeah. perhaps making making the entire pr uh, workflow more more efficient. Uh, um, that yes, that also, yes. Yeah, kind of, it's just yes. Uh, I believe yeah, chatbots can be extremely useful. I I, I agree to that totally. Uh, but as I said, I'm I'm uh, I. I believe that there are a number of things that chatbots can solve for us to make uh, the teacher's life easier in a way. Yeah. But <laughs> I'm not sure uh, uh, if they can take our jobs away. So <laughs> there are a lot of things that, that uh, we are still as humans can do and, and I don't think artificial intelligence or chatbots in, in, in particular can, can do it at the moment at least. Yeah. Um... Is there, um, in terms of uh, kind of restrictions, uh, I, I was asking about uh, what you're most intrigued by, but is there certain things that we can do but shouldn't do? Uh, in terms okay, of yeah, that, that's a different topic. It's about ethics in, in AI and yeah. 
quite a topic that is uh, inter interesting to me because I think we are going the wrong way. We are allowing things that we shouldn't be allowing. Uh, for example, I don't know if you know, Kalashnikov has an aut uh, autonomous system which is able to use weapons and uh, artificial intelligence is able to decide upon life or death. That is something I don't believe artificial intelligence uh, should do at all. Mm. And, uh, there is a lot of problems with, with the current approach of, based on big data. It's based on big data, analytics methods are great, but uh, mostly the data is not good. Data has a lot of bias, has a lot of uh, errors in it and, and so on. And if you put systems that are based on uh, such data into um, real world problems, I don't know, like deciding about uh, the, the, the destiny of some people or life or death and so on, you mm -hmm. can have errors and uh, I don't think that, that, that it is good. There were a lot, for example, there was, uh, was a system, I believe in the UK, but I'm not, not sure, mm. uh, about uh, uh, prediction of crim uh, uh, criminal uh, activities. And the system was so biased that mostly uh, people of color and so on were mm. the ones that were predicted to be uh, criminals. Yeah. So uh, that's the problem with the data that they, they trained the system. So so you're mentioning uh, ethics around AI, uh, but the connection here to, to ethics of chatbots, what do you say? It, it sounds to me that uh, chatbots are, are in, this, in, the, in the context of AI is more of the, the interface. Yes, but, and that, and that, <laughs> but uh, so, you uh, remember the, the chatbot Microsoft put out. That that was that became a great uh, Nazi and so on in, in about yeah. two weeks or something, <laughs> because yeah. they let him to, to talk to people on Twitter or uh, I don't remember it was Twitter or something, yeah. and just in a matter of a uh, uh, few days or something it get got the worst possible uh, language and so on to learn. So it's, yeah. a, it's a similar problem. It's problem with the data that you use to train the chatbot. Uh, we use uh, data to train various models of, of chatbots and, and, and mm. other uh, other AI. And if you don't use good data, so quality data, you mm. will have errors. And you have we have also problems in, in the communication and so on. You have errors, texts, and, and so on. It doesn't have to be this brutal where someone gets killed or, or something like that. It mm. can be a simple thing that the chatbot uh, don't know, subsumes that you are, I don't know, uh, someone else or that you, uh, it doesn't use the grammar correctly or, or something like that. Hmm. I, the, 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 isn't it the case that uh, a lot of AI solutions are also based on user-generated content and data? Yes. yes. So uh, the, the, it sounds like it, that, that makes it even more complicated to yes quality control uh, yes, yes, yes. solutions provided here. That, that, that's a big problem. Quality control, especially of data, is, is a very big problem. Yeah. It's a huge amount. Uh, we, we, you cannot look through those data by hand. You just can't do it. it it's physically impossible uh, to uh, look up terabytes of text. So it's, it's, it's impossible. Okay, so, so that makes it harder to kind of go in uh, afterwards yeah. and fix the problem right, right once the model is trained yeah is that how yes. it works yes yes okay so so once uh how do you say what once a uh, chatbot goes row <laughs> <laughs> then uh, then you you have to kill it yes in a way <laughs> <laughs> yes there was also this interesting these two chatbots that uh, very uh, what were they, Facebook or someone? I don't, I don't remember who, who implemented them. Uh, they were talking to each other and they invented their own language. Uh, to right. that way that that, uh, that uh, the scientists who implemented that didn't understand what they were talking about. So they shut them down, for, <laughs> just for good measure. <laughs> That's really fascinating. Yeah. Uh, do we have any final questions here before we wrap up for today? I think we have time for one uh, one final one. Otherwise, uh, I, uh, I want to uh, thank you, uh, 
thank you for uh, this uh, great presentation and a lot of inspiration uh, for me personally. It, it, it did uh, inspire me to uh, dig into the inner workings of, uh, of, the, of the chatbots. Uh, both the intelligent part, but also the do-it-yourself uh, woodcraft. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think I will go home now and uh, uh, start my next uh, woodcrafting project. <laughs> Good. <laughs> nice. And um, uh, to everyone participating, uh, thank you for uh, being here. And, uh, very welcome to our conference next week, coming up on Tuesday. Uh, where we have some great uh, guest speakers, uh, and uh, and uh, that's something that I personally uh, look forward to. Uh, so with that, have a nice day, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye.